Come right on in. You're it, Father Fish. Nice to That's have you with us. That's a Pleco. It's moving sand. I'm not aware of Pleco's moving sand. I'll tell you what Pleco's do, though. <clears throat> they make burrows. Uh, typically, they will burrow into the side if there's a if if they're in, a, in an embankment, a pond or a creek or a stream or a whatever that has an embankment, they'll go into the embankment. I suppose they also will go in the bottom. Um, although I'm not aware of them doing it, it would make it make sense. The pleco digs a burrow in order to protect its egg mass. It lays a, uh, a big round ball of an egg mass that looks for all, it's about the size of an orange. Um, and, and looks for all the world like a knobby orange. And they'll sit in that, um, uh, in, in that little, little uh, cave that they've dug with the eggs protecting them in the spring, late spring, and all through the summer, here in Florida, the canals, the, the, the walls of the canals are full of these, these, uh, these little runs that, they, uh, that the plecas have made. And there are uh, egg collectors, people, who go out all spring and summer long and put their arms way up into those holes. <laughs> I blind, wouldn't. Blind and, until they feel what's in there. And if it's a pleco, they kind of work their hand around it, grab the egg mass and pull it out. Typically, they got to get the pleco out of there first because the egg mass won't fit past them. Um, and then they sell those egg masses for about $5 a piece. And they can collect upwards of a thousand of them a day. So there's a great deal of money in it. The farmers buy them. They sell them to the farmers. The farmers put them in their pond or put them in, excuse me, in hatch out tanks or trays in their uh, in their fish house if they have one, hatch them out, and then they take them out and they dump them in their ponds. There are thousands of babies, thousands of eggs, in every one of these egg cases. So they start harvesting at about one month. They're feeding pretty heavily, so in a month, these guys are up to an inch. And they start harvesting at an inch. And ship them out. Ship them out. It is the most prolific fish in the industry. And it is the most worthless fish in the industry. And the one fish nobody should ever buy. <clears throat> and yet it is sold at a greater rate than any other fish in the hobby. And the reason I say that is because they become absolute monsters. <clears throat> oh, they'll keep your tank cleaned up for a while, but right. they grow really fast. And they can get, I've seen them four foot long. They can easily get to a foot and larger in your tank. And then what do you do? It's too big for your tank. If right. you have a pond, you can put it in the pond. Most people don't have ponds. So they wind up turning them loose or taking them to a shop that'll accept them. Most shops will not accept them. I always accept them. You know, I have enough people with ponds that we can get them, we can get them in ponds. But it's a dreadful problem. <clears throat> There are many other kinds of placostomus, like the bushy nose, that only get four to five inches full grown. They're perfect in a fish tank. They do brilliantly well. 
uh, and save you the aggravation of dealing with something that becomes so big that it winds up messing up your tank. Um, mm -hmm. One more thing I wanted to say about that. <clears throat> and I've told this story before, but it bears repeating. In the 1950s and early 60s, uh, there was a, a farm farmer, actually it was two brothers <clears throat> from South America who set up a farm in, uh, in Florida to raise tropical fish. <clears throat> and one of the fish that they were specializing in was these placostomus. They would catch them by the thousands in their, in their home country and bring them up. And they finally realized that they were spending a lot of money on transportation. And if they could get them growing wild in Florida, it would be a simple matter to go out and, and, uh, and catch them locally, so they did that. They began releasing placostomus all over Southwest Florida by the tens of thousands. They released them, and today we have probably a larger population of placostomus here in Southwest Florida than they do in their native country. And there are so many different species, but they all get big. They've done genetic research on them and discovered there are three or four different species. So they're mutts, they're monsters, and they, uh, by digging in the, the canal walls, they cause the canals to collapse. So they they create all kinds of really dreadful problems. <clears throat> Somebody made the comment yesterday in Discord that they, um, uh, that that if, if you're transporting them or keeping them in a small container, you need to have oxygen in the water, and that's not true. They are air breathers. They come to the surface, as do in most cattle. They come to the surface to, uh, uh, to take a gulp of air, which allows them to live in very muddy uh, circumstances that otherwise will not support fish life. So, you know, if we can find a way to dispose of them yes. all, every once in a while we get a freeze and it knocks them back pretty hard, but that's like once every yeah. 10 years or so. Well, I hope you found something you've never seen before. Have a great day. Nice having with us. Come on back.